We have had literally millions of our brethren slaughtered in China in the last so many years. We have had people literally uh, uh, put up on YouTube, send a video uh, through whatever internet connection they have, only to be murdered after that video hits the uh, airwaves or it hits the internet. We have people that are telling us of the most horrible things of people having live vivisections where they take organs out of Falun Gong, where they take organs out of Christians. We heard the story of the crematoriums, the satellites were picking up all the smoke of the dead bodies, and people saying Christians were being burned alive. And yet the jellyfishians, a jellyfishian, again, is a Christian in name only, with no spine, thinks that if I'm quiet, they won't come and get me. If, I'm, if I say nothing, I won't be put on the radical list. I'll tell you what, you all better, we all, I am so, in, uh, how do I say this, focused on this statement. I better make sure that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That becomes more important to me than the uh, Devil's Book of Death, okay? Or, as the Egyptians called, the Book of the Dead. That's why Jesus says, let the dead bury the dead. But we're, our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That means that our response to God through obedience and through just following him, obeying him, in essence, God writes into the book of our life in real time that which is done for him out of a pure spirit, out of a pure motive, out of genuine love and all that. God, God isn't forgetful. We don't have to worry about dementia in the kingdom of heaven. We don't. And we should worry about it when it comes to, are we ready? And you can remember that whatever the date is, when the Internet is no longer, and we see it all happening, ladies and gentlemen, with all the social media, uh, social media maniacs, faces of death book, I'm sorry, Twitter twatter, pitter patter, all of, all of the, uh, you know, even GoFundMe now has gone political, Everybody's going political. And if you are not in their system, you can't even pay your bills. What about my mortgage? Forget it. They will use the m of the beast, and forgive me, prior to the m of the beast, mandatory back. They're going to see how many people resist. They have a formula. If this many people, if this, I'm sorry, if this many people resist, they'll hold off another six months or a year. If this few resist, they'll go for it on the spot. Resistance isn't futile. It's necessary. Because the scripture in the book of Hebrews says, we have not yet resisted evil to the shedding of our blood. That means we're willing to die for what we believe. Hey, Muslims are. And, 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 but the Christians never command to go out and blow up, you know, roadside IEDs or any of that stuff. But the thing is, is that, and the devil makes war on the lamb, that's Jesus himself, and on his followers. And, and Doug, most of the prophecies out there that have been given over since George Washington's vision, yeah, you know, what are they, almost 400 years old now? Some of them, George Washington's vision would be, you know, whatever, just 400 years old or what, what the number of the math is. Yeah. But the thing is, is they're all saying the same thing. I would say this, if you don't believe God's long-suffering, if you don't believe God's merciful, think about when he started warning, because he is God, and he knows the end of the thing at the beginning of the thing. And he also knows that he's not caught off guard. He knows exactly what he's going to do. When Christians ask him, God, how are you going to protect us? He said, how do I protect Daniel, lion's den? Well, I have one friend that said, well, I'm going to stay away from the zoo then. <laughs> I said, that's not the point. You know, Shadrach, Meshach, and, and Abednego in the fire, yet one like unto the Son of Man was in there with him. When Jesus is with you, he's the one that gives us the, the stamina and the endurance where we don't have it in ourselves. He's the one that is with us. He abides with us. And he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So what, what is, is the most, I would say this, the most important point today on this broadcast is understand that the total war against Christians is underway. Persecution will be unequal by any time in history. 
Jesus said, there's never been time like it, nor would be again, except the days be short for the elect's sake. Those days are being shortened, but there'd be no flesh left alive. That's really sobering, you know? That's truly sobering. And uh, I think it's becoming more apparent, Doug, that, and, and this is only known to God, this is a wild guess on my part, how many of us take the Word of God seriously? And then how many of us take the Word of God serious enough to act on it? Even Coach Dave, I posted his article today, bravo for Dave Dottenmeyer. He basically said, I ain't wearing no more masks, you know? Well, they won't Amen. let me in the door. Well, you know, while well, Amazon, go, and I, I, when I say this, go where you can get stuff shipped in. But I'm telling you, I'm already seeing, too, since I'm a merchant, I'm already seeing interruptions in the postal service, UPS, and FedEx for the first time. I've been a FedEx uh, whatever guy that used the service for over 38 years, or whenever they came on the scene, I started with FedEx. Prior to that was UPS. But the point is, is that everything's breaking down. People don't care anymore. People are having stuff stolen off their porches. Trucks are being stopped. There are some trucks that are do, uh, caravanning. Kudos to you truckers that do that. If you're best friend and you are taking loads of the same city, you guys keep track of each other's sixes. And, uh, you know, uh, if you have to hire, have your – and there are I, – I, a friend of mine has a trucking company. His trucking company's best friend, excuse me, owns it. And he's preparing to take his truckers and their families out of California into a place that he's already prepared. The prophets, and he's, got, he's very, very successful. And God, God told him, these are your employees, but they're my servants. Take care of them. Isn't that well, cool? Well said, yes. Yeah. And I think that this is why the war between Christians should end. So how do we determine who's right and who's wrong, who's following, you know, who claims to be Christian? Well, I think Jesus made it easy, you know. He made it easy. By their fruits, you shall know them. What are the fruits? Well, first of all, we're commanded to go into the world and, and teach all nations. We're commanded to make disciples. We're commanded to fight the fight for our brethren who don't have the strength in their lives to fight, but then they come and they join in the battle. Bob Mufford said the Christians are the only group in the world that uh, leave their wounded on the battlefield and do their best to uh, hasten their entrance into heaven or something like that. In other words, I was bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. Well, you know, whatever the words are, I forget the words of that, but they didn't, it, somebody cared. Somebody cared. The Good Samaritan is about somebody who cared. It didn't matter if he was a Jew or a Samaritan. It didn't matter. He cared. When people start caring beyond their comfort zone, God starts moving in the miraculous. That's a powerful statement. Never mm -hmm. made it. My life, ever. That's what's got to happen. And that's why God is going to, I'm sorry, but all of our comfort zones are going to be shaken to the core. But when they're shaken to the core, God himself is going to move in our lives and through our lives as he's never done before. Isn't that cool?